We delivered a parcel here today, uh, which I bought off eBay. Now I paid 50 quid for this, including delivery. Um, and I'm going to tell you what's inside. What's inside is a TurboGrafx-16. Now I know you can buy, in this country, certainly in England, you can buy brand new in box, old, new old stock TurboGrafx-16s uh, for about the same price. But this is slightly different and you're going to see why when I open the box. So, let's get opening. Now the reason why I paid a lot for a second hand TurboGrafx was because it came with this, the CD. And uh, that's it there. It takes 10 volts, line out. Wow. So the CD attachment itself is actually quite small. <laughs> It does, in fact, sit on this most enormous base. Quite a sizable chunk. I see it's locked in. And hopefully I can get this CD working. I'm sure it does work, I don't know. He says it does work, but there are problems usually with this system where the, uh, the, lens, the CD lens might be okay, but the gear mechanism inside tends to lock up over time, Just it just does, it's a um, cheap plastic that was involved. So uh, what I'll do is I'll see if I can get it working again. I don't have, I don't think, it, it takes 11 volts or something. I don't have an 11 volt adapter that's powerful enough because you definitely need a good few amps of power to get this working. So uh, once I grab a um, an adapter, I'll get it working. Uh, but hopefully I will have myself a TurboGrafx CD. I've never owned one of these systems. Okay, so this is the CD-ROM unit. Um, I wasn't sure if it worked or not. I plugged it in and not a lot happened. Um, I've got myself a proper um, adapter. I've got myself an adapter for it and uh, took it apart. The CD drive here. The CD drive comes out from the unit. So it actually stands it's like a little standalone CD player, and I think you can actually just plug it in, and then you've got the line out there. You can plug it in straight into a CD, uh, into an amplifier, and just use it as a CD player. Now I don't have the system card, so I can't play any games on it just yet, uh, and you don't even have any Hue card games. But I put it all together after I'd given the gears a little bit of a clean, and it didn't work. So I gave the lens a little bit of a clean, and. Once I switch it on, I have to switch the bottom bit and then the top bit, and then the screen just gives me a blank screen. Now, if I had the system card in, it would say, Welcome to the system card, plus play to run a game. But I've got a CD in here, um, it's Florence and the Machines, so you'll have to put up with rubbish music. But now it did skip earlier. Maybe it's going to play. Yeah, so the CD skips, but it seems to find the second track, so maybe there's something wrong with my CD. So, so I've got the CD working, so all I need to do is get myself a system card, and uh, I think I can burn my own games, um, being CD and it's very old CD technology. So. A successful buy. Okay, I've taken apart my uh, TurboGrafx-16 because I want to do the RGB mod. Now the RGB mod works quite well with these bigger grey systems. There's lots of space inside the, the system. There's even space here where they were going to put originally an in-game in game, but uh, they didn't bother putting it in. So all this is just empty space uh, inside the case. On this side, obviously, this is where the old RF television signal comes out. Now, these days, most TVs are digital only, so there's no, there's no point in having this. So I've uh, desoldered it and ripped it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this 8-pin eight pin? Yeah, uh, DIN. Uh, and it's going to go on the side here and actually fits out. When you lie it on the side here, it actually fits perfectly where the original hole is so there's no need to modify the outside of the case. The other thing I'm going to do, and that's on this side, just take that. on this side is 
this is the Hue card connector, and uh, I'm going to fit in the um, um, region mod for this. And again, um, I cheated a little bit. I bought a um, internal switchless mod. Well, it's not switchless, but it's all done using um, microchips. I think it was eighteen dollars. I got it from the PC Engine forums. And uh, what I'll do is you cut. There's some pins in the middle. You cut sort of eight pins along here and then you connect it up and then also on this side you can see where the old RF thing is there's a switch so you could choose which RF channel you want so what we're going to do is put the switch on the case and then that switches between uh, Japanese and American European uh, game cartridges so I can play even more games okay so I've finished wiring everything up I've got uh my super video well there's eight pin din output output with the rgb output uh here is a little uh, small board that's got the um amplifier for the red green and blue over here i've got the switched uh switch for the region mod and here is the actual switch uh, let's see let's turn it on see the game inside switch it on and hopefully there we go we've got Bonk's Adventure that's an American one and the region switch here is accompanied with a little blue light if the blue light is on it's American and if it goes off it's Japanese alright so it's all being put back together and uh, I've got the CD system out here, and this is the AV out now, the uh, RGB output goes from here. There's the little blue light. Uh, when it's on, that means it's in uh, American mode, and when it's off, that means it's set for Japanese mode, so it's a quick, easy way to tell when you switch it on, you know you'd have to put a card in, you just switch it on, and you can say, oh, it's in the, either mode. And I've got Gallagher and 90 in at the moment, let's just switch it on, and on comes a light. And on the TV... There we go. Caliga 90 in nice RGB output. Okay. Now, let's uh, take that out. We'll put in the Japanese see, Super System CD card version 3. We flick the switch to make it uh, Japanese and switch it back on see no light on and then there we go super cd rom system 2 let's run it there we go running now what we're not getting now is uh, with no sound that's because when you run the CD uh, system, the sound actually comes out from the CD, the back of the CD, and not doesn't get rooted through back into this. So what I do, what I've done is I've just put in uh, the red and white in the back of the CD system, keeping it as RGB from the Turbo Graphics, and then I just change it on my amplifier, and then you get the music. So you get all that lovely CD sound. CD sound and RGB output. Job done. I think there's only one last thing that I probably need to do, and that's to replace the laser in the um, CD player. It's definitely on the way out. It's very picky about what CDs it wants to play. So, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, he's getting all very excited over here. Alright, that's that. Cheers. Bye bye.